There is one thing all boards have in common, and it's the fact that they do not function. And that's not me saying that, okay? It's not, that's not my line. It's Drucker, Peter Drucker. Nonprofits are poorly managed because of unrealistic expectations that are placed on volunteer board members. I started to review them for you a minute ago. Give, 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 and receive nothing in return. Let's wear you out and move on to the next person. If you are, now I'm not talking about a nonprofit executive right now. I'm talking about who's serving on a board. I know there's board members in here that are nonprofit execs. But if you are here more in the tradition of being a volunteer board member, would you honor the group? Would you stand if you are a volunteer board member? Please stand. And would you give every one of these volunteer board members a round of applause for taking their time and coming out and trying to figure this out with us? Thank you. That was just so I could know where you were all sitting so I can do this number. And what about our board members that are present? Here we go. What is boardsmanship? This is gonna blow your mind. When I tell you what boardsmanship is not, it's gonna blow your mind. Here's what boardsmanship is not. Boardsmanship is not volunteerism. We don't need a banquet committee of the board. We don't need a strategic planning committee of the board. Please strip out all volunteer functions from the board. We don't need a fundraising committee of the board. Please remove all volunteer functions from the board. Boom. Second, what is not, it's not governance. I'll tell you what being a governor is. You're a full-time executive, you have a cabinet of people that work for you, and you figure out how to govern. Giving one, five, 10 hours a week, 120 hours a year is not governing. Strip out all the volunteerism, realize that you're not governing. And if you are governing, it's because all the staff is getting with you in advance, briefing you on what to say at the board meeting because that's what they want you to say. And they are prepping you. That's not governing. Boards don't govern. And good night in the morning. It's not policy, you make, oh, but our board makes policy. Have you actually ever seen a board member sit down for a year and thoughtfully write and figure out a policy? Have it tested and have it, and then bring it back to, the, board members don't write policy. Matter of fact, in this day and age, we hire CEOs with competencies in this particular area of, of program service. Friends, 100 years ago, here's what happened. There were some great people in Philadelphia and in New York and in our major metropolitan Northeast cities, and they were doing good work and they didn't necessarily have an education or a background or an even acumen for it. And they needed money. And, and the city fathers and mothers surrounded them. And they took the industrial age, you know, Henry Ford type board model, corporate board model, and began applying it to nonprofits. And it was fine. We're grateful, and it worked. The only way the rest of these two days make sense as it relates to boards, is if you understand that there is nothing natural about putting a committee together of individuals that you don't pay, that don't have the time. And I'm talking about the biggest boards in the, look at Penn State University. When they had to face that whole issue with the coach and the coaches and the kids issues, this board of trustees are the most brilliant minds in the world and they blew it for years, this board. There is just nothing correct or natural or right about a CEO being hired by a board and then the CEO having to hire consultants to train their bosses. We're gonna do a board training this week. What? Now, friends, I, I talk about this as though it's ludicrous. It, it, is, it is so normative, Norman, Norman isn't even the right word. This is exactly how we do it, and it's gonna take us decades to change. But I figure, I got 25 years to move the needle, and we are starting here today. Well, thank you. And let me tell you what I did first. Figured out how to put together a board 
that actually really works. And they're here right now, and I'm going to tell you all about them. Boardsmanship is this. It is advice, and it is accountability. A board can provide me advice. And a board, instead of relying on the president or the CEO to write the reports that come to the board meeting, what kind of report is that? I get to write my own self-evaluation every time there's a board meeting and share how wonderful I am. That's our model. They can provide me advice, and they can provide me accountability, and let me show you how they do it. By having in place the proper board positions. Do you have a person on your board of directors, a single person, not five of them? Because by the way, working group theory says this, any working group that has more than five to seven people max is no longer a group that works. It's just a cocktail hour. Do you have one person on your board that is an enterprise expert? Do you have one person on your board that understands your program and delivers that service, is able to advise you in the actual program, your most trusted friend? Do you have a person on your board that is an expert in finance? Do you have a person on your board that understands not the law, friends? I don't need no attorneys on my board that don't understand nonprofit law. Do you have a person on your board that understands communications? I would have put communications on there, but the word was so much longer. It really should be, it should be communications. I didn't like the way it looked visually. And do you have a person on your board that understand nonprofits? Understanding business and growing an enterprise is different than a person who understands nonprofits. So what we have here is we have a business expert, a program expert, a finance expert, a legal expert, a communications expert, and we have a nonprofit expert. In the person, in the personhood, in the personship of these men and women, which I get to serve alongside, as the nonprofit expert. I have read from the second who put 15,000 people on the state house steps 30 years ago in the middle of the civil rights music movement and has organized and grown enterprises around this community. I have my program director, the professor, the academician, the person who has committed her entire life to grassroots nonprofit organizations and growing them in the person of Kathleen Robinson. I have Scott Hummerson, the head of Wegner CPAs. They have 700 nonprofit clients that they do accounting for. I have my old friend Jackson Doggett from Washington, D.C., where he sets up nonprofit structures. He understands how to make sure a nonprofit is maximized, but is completely safe in its doing. I have my best friend, best man at my wedding, Honey Korngold, documentary filmmaker. Anytime it's time to message something, anytime it's time to deal with what's going on in the marketplace with pushback, I call her. She provides me great advice. And I have spent my entire 27 years, all of my adult years, I am 49 now, I have spent my entire 27 years serving the nonprofit sector. Friends, now there is a board. And you'll say, they're all your friends, Jimmy. They're all your friends, they're your cronies. Friends, you give me any board in this room and I can bamboozle them for years. This board would drop me in a New York minute because they know me if I did anything wrong. There is true accountability here. There is amazing advice. How do they do it? How do they manage properly? We comply with the IRS. They annually hire and fire the CEO. They retain a third party auditor. They evaluate me with third party data. And here's what you're gonna love. You wanna know it? You gotta love this. Here's what I've discovered over the years. Executive directors and CEOs are only going to do what they wanna do. 
So they can say they're implementing the board's vision, but what they're doing is they're implementing their own vision and they're just messaging it in a way where the board feels like it's theirs. So it's not at your organization, it's not about the board's vision. And board members, don't kid yourself, you can't hire a person to implement your vision, but you can hire a person that understands your mission and adheres to advancing your mission and has a vision that they've embraced in such a way that they advance it in ways that you never thought possible. This board of directors keeps us in between the lines as it relates to mission, but they support me 100% in my vision. Gabe, would you carefully and just generously pass out those envelopes? Thank you. Board members, you can even open up those envelopes. There's different numbers in there for each of you. Could you hold that envelope up and wave it just for, just wave that envelope a little bit. Can you wave that envelope? Hey! hey. <laughs> Friends, you just witnessed board members being paid. You don't even know what to do with it yet. You don't even know what to do with it yet, I know. I'm gonna explain, it's okay, I'm gonna explain. It's okay for, me. It's okay for you. <laughs> Friends, is this compensation? I don't know. Is it remuneration? Is it reimbursement? Is it an honorarium? This tweet came yesterday morning. I'm writing this inaugural address. This tweet comes. This comes from, and by the way, we celebrate this group. I celebrate this group. This tweet comes from the newly formed Ethics Justice League, the Ethics Justice League. And I think it is okay, as we entertain the idea of board members being paid or honored, I think it's okay that people push back. It's startling, isn't it? The National Council of Nonprofits and their CEO, Tim Delaney, was quoted when interviewed about Nano, and he said, they're so far outside the norms that it's startling. So, here's what the tweet was. Are we also going to talk about Nano Central's tax returns and how you pay people to be on your board? Let me set my DVR. I'm in my first Twitter war, and from what all the social media experts are telling me, this is exactly where we're supposed to be, and I, it's just killing me. I just want everybody to be my friend. <laughs> so let's talk about what just happened. Let's talk about what just happened. How much? How much are in those envelopes, right? Here's another problem. I had an existential moment. Last week, I'm in Jackson, Mississippi with many of you, and I'm explaining what we pay our board members and why. And then the person sits and says, but what does your board give at 100%? So here's this existential thing. Okay, I'm gonna give you a check, but I expect you to give it right back to me. <laughs> Redford's having a heart attack up here, okay. Let's just process this for a second. How much is the wrong question? The better question is, if you did pay your board members, which ones would you keep? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> boy, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Let me tell you how this works. Our bylaws call for three board meetings a year. You're saying, Jim, there's only three. I talk to this man every morning at 5 a.m. We start our day devotionally together. I spend every other day on the phone with her for hours. Each of these people, Honey Corngold, broken for good, dedicating her self life to family oriented films that advance philanthropy, that advance the nonprofit sector. I am so scared to death about the things that we're doing. I have a, a bat phone right to Jackson Doggett's attorney's desk up there in Washington, D.C. And Scott oversees nonprofit tax returns, which we just filed and we just submitted two more to him. 
So friends, it's not about the three boarding members, board meetings a year that, that our bylaws call for. It's the fact that on a daily basis, somehow, in, in an involuntary way, that we breathe in and out together because we are reciprocally, we're wholly taken with accomplishing something together as a group. It is very natural. So it's not that we gather three times a year and we don't see each other. I find myself relying on this board essentially daily, weekly. But our bylaws call for three meetings a year. Two of those meetings are via teleconference. One of those meetings is in person. We pay $300 an hour for each board member for our teleconference, which is why our board meetings are only 15 minutes long. <laughs> I mean, it's a joke, I can't. And then when the board gathers, there is a $1,000 honorarium when the board spends a whole day gathering. And then travel expenses are reimbursed. Friends, I, we, our finance committee, our board of directors, our governance, our bylaws, we're able to budget what that is out, what that looks like annually. And I will let you know that each of these people have given more cash, given more time, given more investment. Do you think I could possibly pay for the work that Dr. Robinson does on all of our behalf as an academician and as a professor in the writing? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if I choose to honor them specifically for their time, and I feel in no way, shape, or form I'm doing it at the expense of the cause or the issue, actually I'm enhancing it and improving it, I just think there's a whole lot to be learned. And I can't tell you the way the thinking shifts for the CEO and for the board members when they're being honored this way. I can't begin to explain to you the numbers of ways that things change. It is all a thing of beauty and it is all for the advancement and the expansion of the mission. I give to you, and if you would give me a round of applause, I give to you a board that works. NANO, Board of Directors, 2017. Thank you. You don't have to sit here anymore. But thank you for sitting here. I wanted to have this. That video, can you imagine sending out a video that says, watch board members being paid, we're gonna be viral in a New York minute.